all things Halloween. <laughs> this is Hotformer, and everyone, happy 2020. It's a brand new year and a new decade, so to jump into a brand new season of Haunting, I'm going to talk to you about some upcoming horror projects for 2020. There are quite a bit of films that I want to discuss today. Thankfully, I have a crack research team to help me out. And, um... Milk cats. It's okay, he gets minimum wage. Let's jump into the horror movies for 2020. I'm going to discuss my feelings on these films, uh, a little behind the scenes about some of them. If I have photos, I'll try to pop those up for you guys so you can get hyped for horror in 2020 because i gotta say there are some interesting films coming out this year that you won't want to miss and to have kept on your radar let's kick things off in january there are some horror films that are already out in theaters that i wanted to talk about because i'm a little late in the month to start this video but that's okay up first was of course the grudge which is the third i guess it's like the second American remake of the Japanese Grudge. I saw it. I could do a review on it if you really want to see that review. It was very boring. Not a lot really happened in the film. But if you wanted to check it out, you could. It had some cool potential, and there were certain scenes that I enjoyed, but overall the movie was kind of disappointing. Actually, a guy fell asleep in the theater next to us while we were watching it, and... Basically, he had the same takeaway from the movie that we did. Yeah. Up next, we have Underwater, a film that I haven't seen, though I heard some underwhelming opinions on it. I heard that there are some cool uh, set design and monster elements to the story, but overall, it just felt lacking to a lot of people. Again, haven't seen it. I might check it out, but this may not be one that you get completely hyped for. And if you haven't seen it by now, I have a feeling that you probably won't. The Turning is actually in theaters right now and stars Stranger Things' Finn Wolfhart. Uh, this is a story that has been adapted before, apparently. I've never heard of The Turning. To me, the trailer seemed kind of weak. It took elements from other horror films that I've seen before and doesn't really offer anything fresh. Uh, I may check this one out because people have been asking me to, but it, it, it seems lackluster. There are some potential things in it. The set looks cool. Finn Wolfhart, of course, is a good actor. So there's potential, but I, I don't know. It looked weird. There's like a scene where he kills a fish, and I don't know how that's supposed to be creepy, but he kills a fish. So if, if you're pescatarian, you may enjoy that. Gretel and Hansel. Ah, you see what they did? It was Hansel and Gretel and they switched it. Uh, this one stars um, Sophia, I think, Lilas from the It films. And it is a story of, of course, Hansel and Gretel with the witch. And I'm not a big fan of fairy tale movies. This is a grim fairy tale, so I guess that's a little more appealing to me and my particular taste. But I've never been a big fan of, of fantasy films and this one just seems like another January horror release, something that we see every year. Horror films that come out in January are typically not the best. Uh, though last year Escape Room came out and that was pretty promising. They're actually making Escape Room 2, which may or may not come out this year. So we'll have to see. But those were the January releases for the year. On to February. Kicking off February, we have Blumhouse's Fantasy Island. So if you haven't heard of Fantasy Island, this was a show that premiered, I want to say, in the, in the 1970s, and was not horror-related at all, similar to the Banana Splits film that came out last year. They're taking an idea that was once non-horror, non-scary, or threatening, and making it into a darker-toned film. This story is about a group of people that go to an island and dark and creepy stuff starts happening to them. I used to be excited when the Blumhouse name appeared before a film, but now I'm starting to get a little sketched out because that's happened before with Blumhouse's uh, Truth or Dare, and that was a big flop. Um, I will have to make a video covering Blumhouse because I have some thoughts on the production company. But with that said, I actually am interested to see 
Fantasy Island just because the concept seems so bizarre to me. Another February horror release is Brahms The Boy 2. There was the original boy that came out a couple years back. I actually did a review on that film, I think. And I liked that movie quite a bit. It had a nice little twist ending, which I enjoyed. The set was very cool. It had a unique premise. And now we're getting the sequel to that film. I don't know if anyone was really asking for this in the horror community, but it's here. I'll probably see it just because I enjoyed the first. And if you haven't seen the first film, please watch it because there's a major twist ending that will probably be ruined for you if you jump into the sequel having not seen the original. All right, now we're getting to some good stuff. The Invisible Man. I've been waiting for an Invisible Man remake for a while. I never usually get hyped about remakes because I, I know they typically don't handle the source material well. This is not a typical remake. This is a re-adaptation of the Invisible Man story written by Lee Winnell, who I really enjoy his writing. For the most part, some of the Insidious sequels are a little meh. But on the whole, I like his career. I am a huge fan of the original Invisible Man, so I'm definitely going to be checking this out. Uh, this is another Blumhouse release, so again, I tread the waters with caution. But I know that a story that looks like a mix between horror and thriller is engaging to me, and I'm excited to see what the story holds for the character. Rounding out the February horror films, we have The Lodge, which I think was kind of misplaced because this seems like a very winter-themed horror film, which would have been perfect for that November-December time after Halloween, but we get it in February for some reason. I don't make the rules. The Lodge, to me, from the premise, sounds like The Shining. You have a family, a group of characters who are in a claustrophobic environment uh, during the middle of a harsh winter, and it appears that there's some religious symbolism going on. Maybe there's a demon involved that would change things up a bit. We'll have to see what happens with that one. Haven't heard much about The Lodge at this point, but I'm eager to see where this goes and how they can differ from films like The Shining that basically follow the same storyline. As for the month of March, I only have one horror film, but it's a pretty big one, and it is obviously A Quiet Place Chapter 2. Now, here's the thing, and you might be shocked by this, I have not seen A Quiet Place. I will be before this sequel comes out because I'm eager to see both of these together. Obviously, if you've seen the trailer, you may know a spoiler, kind of a big spoiler from the first film, but... I know a lot of horror fans are excited for this. I'm not sure how this story could make a sequel. Again, I haven't seen the first one, so I can't judge it until I've seen that film. But I feel like it was a one-shot. Though, if the story can expand in a neat way, I am all on board for yet another horror uh, series, especially in great hands. So, fingers crossed on that one. Right around the month of April, we have a few interesting horror releases that I'm excited about. Up first is The New Mutants. What's interesting about this film is this is a technically an X-Men film. It's a Marvel movie, but it's also a horror film. And we don't see the blend of superhero and horror very often, especially when it comes to the Marvel uh, films. I mean, you have like the original Blade and stuff like that, but, but besides that film... There's nothing super dark about Marvel movies, so when The New Mutants was announced, I was excited. I'm not the biggest X-Men fan, but I can appreciate a good thriller superhero movie when it comes my way. I'm excited to see where The New Mutants goes with the X-Men lore. One of my most anticipated upcoming horror films for the year is actually one you might be a little surprised about, and that is Antlers. I am really hyped for this film. And I don't know why. There are two major reasons. The first is that it is a story about the Wendigo. And the Wendigo is this weird, like, Indian tribal spirit thing that can shapeshift from, like, a deer, hence the, the title Antlers, to, like, a human form. And it can trick people. It's a very interesting cryptid if you're into those. And the other big thing that draws me to this is that it's produced by Guillermo del Toro. Uh, famous for movies like Hellboy and Pan's Labyrinth, but he also recently produced Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, 
which was a great film. So I'm excited to see that. Plus, I know he loves his practical effects, so if we can see a really cool practical creature in this movie, I would be totally on board. Antlers is definitely one that I'm going to be keeping on my radar. And of course, we have Antebellum. You've probably seen a trailer for this at your local movie theater. Antebellum, I, I can't really say what the story is exactly from the trailer. They kept it very vague, and that's perfectly fine with me. It, it looks like it's shot very well. It has a creepy tone in the trailer, and it follows a little girl. Uh, actually, it's being marketed as from the producers of Get Out and Us, which is, of course, Blumhouse. But they're really hitting the, the Jordan Peele films, so I'm wondering if it's going to be similar in tone to his films, which would be interesting because I love how he puts his horror films together. So Antebellum is one that I'm interested for, but at the same time, I'm cautious because are Blumhouse trying to give us Get Out and Us on the poster to entice us or to actually show us what the movie is going to be like? I don't know. Only time will tell for that one, but Antebellum is rounding out April. After April, the horror like continuity in terms of what months the movies come out get a little weird. So this is a lot of speculation, but there are some definite gems in here. And up first is the Saw reboot. Uh, I don't know if it has an official title yet. I heard some being called like the Body Snatcher or Body... Something about a body. There's something about a body. But this is the Saw reboot that we've been hearing about for the last year. Chris Rock announced like last summer that he was going to be rebooting Saw, which is really odd to me. Because, obviously, Chris Rock is known for comedy, and he also voices the zebra from Madagascar, and now he's making a Saw movie. But, honestly, I'm kind of excited for it. Also, Sam Jackson, yes, that Sam Jackson, is going to be in the movie. And if he plays Jigsaw, I would be so on board for it. Of course, it'll never top the original Saw. Tobin Bell, of course, cannot be beat. But... In terms of something fresh and different, I am actually eager to see how a Saw reboot works out. That would be interesting. And speaking of reboots, we also have the Candyman reboot coming out, I believe in the summertime. I have not seen the original Candyman. It is on my list of two watch horror films. And this is a film that's being produced by Jordan Peele, who is perhaps my favorite director of horror as of recent. So, with his name attached to the project, I'm very excited to see what this reboot entails. It's, it's part remake and part sequel from what I'm hearing. It takes place after the events of the original Candyman, similar to the Halloween film that we got in 2018. Uh, but I'm sure it's going to have remake-ish elements in it, probably treading along the same line and same tone. I'm still on board. Tony Todd is said to be in the movie, which is exciting. So, I don't know, for all you Candyman fans, are you excited for this? And for the Saw fans, how about you guys, too? When I was doing research, I'm sorry, when my research assistant yeah. Yeah. was doing research for this video, uh, I came across a potential new Purge movie. I don't know if that's actually going to be happening. It popped up on the list around summertime, like 4th of July era, when usually the Purge movies come out. I know the TV show's happening. I don't know if there's another movie planned. Not much to say on this. It's another Purge. In my opinion, the Purge films have gotten worse with every entry, but maybe the Purge 5 can be redeemed. I would still see it because I like the concept, and I, I know even if it's not my favorite movie, it offers something fresh that I can potentially enjoy in the theater. Up next, we have a film that I really don't know anything about. It's called The Empty Man. I saw a poster for it, which looked kind of cool. It, it looks animated from the poster, which, if there's an animated horror film coming out, sick. But not really much to say. Uh, the name sounds similar to The Hollow Man, which was kind of a remake of The Invisible Man, which we're also getting this year. So there's a lot of The Mans coming out, and then we have The Boy Horror is weird, but you gotta love it, am I right? I'm right. 
Another release that I'm very excited for is Maligant, and I don't know anything about this movie. All I know is that James Wan is directing it, and that is enough to make my little horror heart very happy. Because James Wan is another one of my favorite modern horror directors, and anytime he directs a film, I always get hyped for it. He's producing several horror films at the moment, but to see him in the director's chair, and I believe the writer's chair too, means that we are in for a very scary treat. Now we're on to the big guns, you guys. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. This is a film I have been wanting to see for such a long time. Technically, The Conjuring 3. Oh, what a, what a gut punch, though. I, my gut's not here. My gut's down here, but the camera couldn't pick that up. What a gut punch that James Wan's not directing. That, that hurts. But the story, if you didn't know, is kind of like a courtroom drama mixed with horror about a man who pleads innocent because he claims to be possessed by a demon, a werewolf demon. Yes, a werewolf demon after a murder takes place. If you saw Annabelle Comes Home, you know there was a werewolf in that movie. Spoiler, sorry. Uh, but that werewolf will be returning for this upcoming Conjuring film. I have really enjoyed most of the Conjuring series, especially the Conjuring movies. So this movie, please don't let me down. Please don't ruin The Conjuring. Make this a film to remember. It is one of my most anticipated movies for the year, and I'm sure for a lot of horror fans, that rings true too. Last Night in Soho is another horror film that's coming out around the fallish season. I don't have a lot of information on this movie. I'm not even sure if there's a trailer out on it yet, but from little images I've seen, it looks very stylistic and cool. I'm always on board for these more unique horror films, and a lot of films recently that blend horror and thriller in a great way, where it's kind of an action-y, uh, but suspenseful and creepy movie too. Last Night in Soho is definitely one on my radar, and I'm interested to, to hear about your opinions on these horror films too, so don't forget to leave those in the comments. <laughs> Here we are, you guys. My most anticipated, not just horror film, but movie of the year. Yeah, it's Halloween Kills, because how could it not be, honestly? After the success that was Halloween 2018, a movie that I harshly did not like at first, but now have come to enjoy. I cannot wait to see where they take the story of Laurie Strode and Michael Myers next. What can I say? I'm a Halloween fanboy. I'm really excited to see what they do with this one. Please don't fail me now. There's another one planned for 2022. And quite honestly, or actually it might be 2021 might be 2021 which is like a back-to-back -back situation going on with the years i thought they were going to skip a year like the the marvel movies do but you know what that's fine with me anytime michael myers is on the big screen i'm going to show up for it i am ready to see where halloween kills goes because michael myers is crispy at the end of halloween or so we thought and finally, just some other horror films I, I wasn't sure when they were coming out, so I just wanted to throw them in at the end. And technically, this first one's not fully horror, kind of like New Mutants, and that is Morbius, which is a film about the Spider-Man villain of the same name. Morbius is the living vampire, and if you're not in the comic books, you may not even know that character, but Morbius is like a bluish-looking vampire dude with long hair. Uh, it's interesting that they were making a horror film about this character, kind of a superhero action-y horror film, but, but scary nonetheless because he is a vampire. Uh, and also Michael Keaton is in the trailer, if you saw the trailer. And Michael Keaton is a treat. I always enjoy his performances because he's so zany and weird. So I am eager to see this movie because it's unlike the traditional Marvel formula that's getting stale at this point. So, we'll see what Morbius offers us. In addition to Morbius, I also have R.L. Stein's Fear Street, which is a uh, uh, an adaptation of one of R.L. Stein's book books or book series. Not sure if this is going to be like on a streaming service or actually a movie, like like a 
more for kids movie, like that house with a clock in its walls type thing. We'll see. I'm always interested in those because they come out usually around Halloween. And when R.L. Stein's name is attached to it, that makes me a little excited because that brings back an ounce of my childhood. And finally, we have Army of the Dead, which is, from what my research has said, a Netflix horror film that's going to be directly put on Netflix and is being directed, or at least has some involvement with Zack Snyder. Yeah, Zack Snyder from, like, the DC Universe is directing a, a horror film called Army of the Dead. Now... Is this in any relation to the Evil Dead or the Army of Darkness? I don't know. I wouldn't think so. But to see a horror film directed by a pretty A-list director at this point is exciting. And the fact that it comes to Netflix means that it's going to be accessible to a lot of people from the comfort of their own homes. And with that all said, I need some water. That is going to be all of the horror films for 2020 there are some that i missed no doubt so leave the ones that i missed or your most anticipated releases in the comments down below and thank you for watching new videos are on their way so get ready for more coverage of some horror halloween and haunt news thank you again and remember for all things halloween this is haunt former